Chatinda, vitamin D has become very popular during the last few years. Everybody is talking about vitamin D. The journals, the medical journals, are full with clinical studies. Who needs vitamin D uh, during which times of the year, in which regions of the world, at which age? Well, I, I call vitamin D a hidden secret because vitamin D has been a concern worldwide for a long period of time, but it's becoming increasingly recognized, at least from the United States point of view, which will be a springboard for what we're going to talk about. The importance came because even in a very sunny state like Alabama, we had a third wave of rickets with the recognition that vitamin D deficiency with the whole spectrum is an important public health issue. And pro the problem has been the avoidance of sunlight. But it's become increasingly recognized that food alone and food and sunlight alone is not going to complete the vitamin D requirement in most of the population. So the windows of time, as you asked, would be infancy, teenagers, and then late life. The evidence, however, is mainly on bone health. Because in some ways I say that osteoporosis is a neonatal disease that shows up in adulthood because it's a continuum of life. So we are just not ingesting enough vitamin D, and that's the reason why worldwide now more and more agencies are recommending that vitamin D be supplemented right away from birth. And with the increased importance of breastfeeding, increased stress on breastfeeding, those babies are very vulnerable. Um, when a pregnancy is planned, should the mother consider to have vitamin D supplementation? She should. The but future born, mother. Yeah, future mother. They should, but you know, in routine, people are trying trials of uh, giving supplementation to, in pregnancy, but the exact dose and the requirements are not known. So currently, the recommendation is not universal vitamin D supplementation, but targeted if you're vitamin D deficient, which, as you pointed out earlier, is almost universal again. So prenatal vitamin would be, including folic acid, vitamin D would be another important thing to make sure we have it. Um, we had several um, symposia in the Middle East because here there's a high risk group, mm -hmm. uh, women who might be vitamin D deficient. What can be done uh, in that segment? In the Middle East it is essentially a big problem, not so much because of pigmentation but because of the clothing and avoidance of sun exposure. So there, there is no alternative, and also they're not a fish-eating population. So there's no alternative except to supplement vitamin D on a routine basis as part of a multivitamin strategy. Uh, it's not, vitamin D by itself is not very expensive, but uh, one has to be careful because the vitamin D preparations are not all regulated, and so it's easy to overdose on vitamin D, especially in infants and children. What would happen if you overdose? In most cases, unless you do almost 10 or more times, what would happen is increased intracranial pressure, headaches, and you will get evidence of intracranial pressure. But in adults, it would be like a pseudotumor cerebri where you get headaches because of the toxicity. But you have to give very large very doses. Very large doses. And that's why I pointed out the infancy, because in infancy, uh, most of the, uh, especially in the West, I'm not so aware of the Middle East, they're dropper folds. So your drop may be bigger than my drop. So you, you're supposed to give 400 units, you may give 10,000 units. So that's why recommendations are to go for a liquid, which you pull out in a syringe or a capsule. At my age, would you take vitamin D? Yes. Uh, even though the evidence is not saying that it's for bone health, vitamin D is becoming important in a multiple things, innate immunity, other things. So most adults in the United States, at least, are taking vitamin D. The question is how much? And uh, there's now preparation of D3, you can get from 1,000 units to 5,000 units three times a week. And in general, it's considered a good one. Similarly, uh, most adults now start taking fish oil because as we age, we may become hypertriglyceridemic. So as a public health issue, I don't think it's a bad idea. We need more evidence for it. We need more evidence, you're saying. Um, vitamin D and bones, this is very well established. Yes. Uh, so for the, for the children, vitamin D is to build strong bones, and then when you are 60, 70, 80, to, to prevent, prevent osteoporosis. Right. Because the children and the elderly are the most two commonly affected population. The elderly, if you look at the population, some surveys up to 50 to 60% elderly have 
bone disease with fractures. And that's largely a preventable uh, with activity and with some good supplementation of D. You mentioned briefly immunity. Is this proof? It, no, it's a, it's a role in innate immunity, a role in asthma, a role in, in respiratory infection is being investigated and it's very marginal evidence, it's not proven. But because of that issue, if you look at the latest IOM report, they only discuss bone health and say there are other advantages but not proven as yet. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.